Hello, 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 good evening, and welcome to the Art of Hope, uh, brought to you by Hopewell. Uh, I'm Luba Goy. I'll be your MC, your mistress of ceremony tonight, and it's uh, an absolute honor and pleasure to be here for this super art auction and live musical entertainment. We've got a great show for you tonight, uh, done by performers from Ottawa. This is, um, this is a little art uh, that I brought here, my parasol. I never leave home without it. Uh, keeps my skin looking lovely. And uh, I'm going to fold it up now. So this is live on Zoom, my first time uh, on Zoom. And I'm very excited. Uh, usually I have a studio, and I have uh, my wonderful technician here, Alex, that's going to be helping me. Uh, sail through this. We're on a big ship and we've got a big crew tonight. And hello to Ottawa, to everybody in Ottawa uh, that's in the studio in Ottawa. So uh, first, um, I want to say that uh, it is really an honor and privilege to host this, this event. It's an important event. The Art of Hope uh, is raising funds for the Hopewell Eating Disorder, Disorder Support Center of Ottawa. And it's also going to create a new art thera a therapy program, giving people living with eating disorders a, a, a safe place to, to get uh, therapy, to participate in art projects, and to share their stories. So I've got a lot of uh, information to impart, so forgive me for wearing glasses and reading. But hey, you know, um, I've got, I got important things to tell you. Uh, you know, when this COVID-19 COVID pan pandemic struck, it, it affected all our, our lives as we know it. And Hopewell is committed to its work and was able to give online group support sessions and individual mentoring shortly after the COVID uh, began. So that is really uh, something to, um, to marvel at. And as I said, I'm Luba Goy, um, actor, comedian, uh, with the long-running uh, comedy show, uh, Royal Canadian Air Force, or as we call it, Air Force. And uh, for those of you who have not been in this country long enough to, to see our show on CBC Radio uh, for 24 years and, and uh, CBC Television for 16 years and then all our New Year's Eve specials, um, well, I just want to say it's all in this book. Yes, Air Force. 40 years of flying by the seat of our pants, which is I'm, what I'm going to be doing tonight. Um, it, it, it gives us, oh, it's got photographs of, of uh, me with the boys from the past, the Air Force guys. Uh, here we are looking really super. Uh, that's me there. Oh, no, that's me. That's Roger. This is Don, Dave Broadfoot, John Morgan. And here I am with the rose in my teeth. And... Um, we had a great run, merely like 47 years or something, but here we are. We, we did radio, television, we crisscrossed this country for 18 years, bringing our comedy to um, every city, every province in this country, from coast to coast to coast, and raising actually millions of dollars for various causes like um, children with muscular dystrophy who needed wheelchairs or um, putting a, a, an art gallery on, on a theater. So I've got a lot of um, things to uh, talk about. Here we are. I just want to show you a little picture here of um, us on stage in the old days. Um, I think I was expecting my child here, but um, don't I look adorable. Um, now. Just a little bit about Air Force because uh, I don't, you know, I'm so proud of uh, the work we did, and we had so much fun making fun of, of uh, the government. We did a political satire, you know, which um, is, um, you know, bringing bringing comfort to the afflicted and 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 afflicting the comfortable. So. Um, 
we've got over 100 awards, and I've got a few here tonight and uh, to show you along, you know, the, the, the evening. And, um, you know, we have a lot of awards. One of my favorite was uh, an honorary doc doctorate from uh, Brock University. And being of Ukrainian background, and my mother was just uh, very proud of me. Ukrainians, you know, education is very important. And uh, when we got our honorary doctorate, my mother was telling all her friends in Ukrainian, which is, oh, I'd be so proud of my Luba. She barely finished high school, but she's a doctor. So um, I used to charge her for house calls. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, she's a doctor. Um, so we made fun of the government. And what a country. We made fun of the government, whether they be like the Green Party uh, or the Bloc Québécois or anybody in between. And they rewarded us for it. They gave us a, you know, a Governor General a Lifetime Achievement Award. And um, <laughs> we make fun of them, and they reward us for it. Is this a great country or what? You wouldn't get that down south, I'll tell you. you know, believe me. And. Um, some of the characters that um, I did, um, I was asked to do some of my um, uh, characters that I like. Is there was Her Majesty the Queen, of course, she's still around. It's like, him, 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 it's a pleasure to be here and to congratulate the Hopewell community to do the art of the art of hope. We all have a lot of hope, don't we? It's a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to be anywhere Camilla is not. And I would like to um, uh, just say hello to Archie, my little grandson, uh, and Megan, and, and Harry. I don't think they're in Canada or Canada now, but uh, I'd like to buy little Archie a little gift. And I hear that Saskatchewan is very nice. So keep up the good work. And uh, that's Her Majesty. And uh, of course, there's one of my favorite uh, poet and, and uh, writer of A Handmaid's Tale, Margaret Atwood, um, who's here tonight as well. Um, I'm so excited to be here tonight. I'm so excited. I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. And it's all here in my book. This is the follow-up, the testaments. It's all here at a discount, $25 discount. No, it's $25. And uh, so there we have it. Now, um, we'll be back. Uh, I've got to um, welcome our audience from London, Ontario, who is also collaborating with Hope's Eating Disorder Support. And the funds raised in that community in London will purchase seats in the upcoming Hopewell virtual peer support programming. And so I think we're going to come to um, uh, introduce, uh, well, I've got things to say, but um, we've got, I think, a minute. Is that a minute? Is that right? Um, 30 seconds. We've got 30 seconds. Well, um, uh, this is an honor of a young woman called uh, Cian. I met Cian as she passed away, uh, sadly, of, of, um, of an eating disorder. And her mother's going to be uh, um, giving us a special message. And so we're going to come to a very special, inspirational message uh, from Cian's mother, Neris Perry, who will uh, talk about uh, her daughter and. Um, why we are doing this um, evening in her memory. Hi, my name is Neris Perry, and I'm the lucky woman who is Cianne's mother. For those who didn't know Cianne, she was beautiful, kind, generous, fun, and we miss her every day. She loved people fiercely. When she hugged you, she held you so tight, you felt like you couldn't breathe. And she loved art, and she loved to make homemade presents for everybody that she knew. And they were beautiful and things you want to keep forever. I know she'd want us to thank you so much for coming out to support people suffering from eating disorders, especially now during this COVID time. It is our hope that through the funds raised with this program, that we will find life-giving support, uh, new programs, and hope for everyone. Take care. There's always gonna be another mountain I'm always gonna wanna make it move Always gonna be an uphill battle Sometimes I'm gonna have to lose Ain't about how fast I get there Ain't about what's waiting on the other side It's a climb
Well, we're back now, and thank you so much, Naris. That was really such a beautiful uh, tribute to your daughter, your beautiful daughter that I met when she was about seven years old. Uh, you live next door to very dear friends of mine, Anna and Barry, who, um, who loved your daughter as well. And um, uh, we're all very sad that, um, that uh, you, you lost her so tragically. Um, but thank you so much for that impa impactful um, moment and um, just want to um, continue with our program now. Uh, this uh, show is going to be about an hour and 30 minutes, that's 90 minutes, and uh, there will be live performances and an art activity between the auction blocks, which we can participate in, so all you need is two sticks and some string. So if you want to get that and uh, have that ready, so at some point in the, in the program we're going to be able to do some art. Uh, with uh, an art activity with with the um, with the leader here. Uh, now I think I'm going to uh, introduce uh, the um, Andrew Jones. Andrew, I hope you're standing by in uh, in the Ottawa studio. Uh, Andrew is Hopewell's board president. He's not bored. He's the board president, and uh, <laughs> who will explain the art act auction and how it works. So pay attention. There will be an exam after. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrew Jones. I'm the chairman of the board of directors of the Hopewell Eating Disorder Support Centre, and I'm also the volunteer president of the organization. It's my pleasure to be with you tonight, and I'm so happy that we were able to live stream our Art of Hope event. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for registering. I know that it means a great deal to CN's family and friends that we have such a wonderful community who are joining us this evening for our event. I also want to take this opportunity to thank Luba Goy for agreeing to volunteer and to work with us and to add her personality and her expertise and her enthusiasm to our Art of Hope event this evening. At Hopewell, we're a frontline mental health charity and the COVID-19 pandemic has been challenging for all of us, but of course extra challenging for those individuals who are dealing with a mental health Ill illness. We're proud at Hopewell that we were able to pivot very early on and deliver all of our worthwhile programming via online platforms. We maintained our programming and we've been able to continue to reach out and support the community that needs us so vitally here in the Ottawa area. Tonight, we're also honoring the memory of CN. And by doing this, by joining us this evening, you're raising valuable funds for an art therapy program, something that we know Cian was very passionate about, her art and her friends and her community. We're very, very touched and warmed by the support that we have this evening as we move forward to develop the art therapy program in her memory and in her honor. In the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, our organizing team reached out to the artist community here in Ottawa and actually throughout the country and throughout the world. Everything you need can be found at 32auctions.com slash Hopewell. We have really two different streams where you can purchase art. One is a live auction. It's running uh, this evening during our event. We have 18 pieces of art that are available on live auction. The other is what we call an art shop, where we have 15 pieces of art that are available. You can go in, peruse, have a look at them, and purchase those pieces of art, and that's available until Monday evening. I'm sure by this time in the COVID-19 pandemic, we're all very familiar with Zoom technology, but I'd like to encourage everyone to use the chat function on our Zoom call this evening and interact with our team back at Hopewell who will be monitoring the chat all night long. If you have any questions about the technology, how to engage with the auctions, please go to that chat function and be updated by the Hopewell team. To conclude, it's never a highlight of an evening like this to hear from the Board of Directors. And I'd like to throw it over now so we can have a look at the wonderful art that's available for auction this evening. It's still a little weird introducing myself to an iPhone camera, but sometimes needs must. My name is Lynette Wilson. I am an Ottawa-based musician and writer. I write music and lyrics and poetry 
once in a while short stories and sometimes I like taking those words and turning them into something beautiful that you can hang on the wall. I am so glad that all of you are here tonight. I hope you enjoy the beautiful artwork that so many people have contributed to this incredible cause. And if you want to see more of what I do just on a day-to-day -day basis, you can follow me on Instagram at lynette.a.wilson. Marika is a Montreal-based artist. She describes her paintings as abstract expressionism with vibrant features. Her artwork is typically written with personal symbolism, from pointillism as her stylistic choice to the theme being displayed. Marika hopes to continue her art practice and her own gallery, where a portion of proceeds will go to various charities. Explanations number five is the more elaborate piece in a long detailed series that is meant to showcase a visual abstract representation of her thought processes. Details among these panels were chosen uniquely and represent different perceptions on various subjects. The seemingly endless number of little dots helps in creating a clearer picture. Being directly or indirectly associated with mental illness can change your life and your way of thinking. While Marika might find things complicated and unbearable in her own head, the thoughts are never muddy. Through her choice of using pointillism, she created an overwhelming mechanical feeling within the paintings to express that our minds and our thoughts are transforming and evolving constantly. A clear evolution, hence the presence of confidently dotted colors which bear complexity nonetheless. There should be no shame in someone taking extra time to understand where another's views derive from. Marika says that it is very possible that this series and approach to painting will continue in her future work as she has always believed that our minds, just as our ideas and potential are limitless in a constant transformative state. And so this series will be as well. Hello, my name is Catherine Fletcher and I am a visual artist, writer and author who lives in the Pontiac region of uh, the Outaouais, West Quebec. I live at Spiritwood, my hobby farm, which gives me access to nature, which is my spiritual renewal. I'm here to introduce you to my piece, my mixed media, uh, artwork which is called Phoenix Rising, They Can't Keep Her Down. This is a, um, a tribute to the soul, to the way that we can soar above those who want to keep us down. You can see that here uh, hands are throwing up a lasso trying to capture this glorious spirit of independence that the um, Phoenix Rising embodies in us all. So my, my story here is all about what actually my mother used to say to me, which is, never say can't, Catherine. That is really the spirit of hope that I want to convey. This next piece is titled Emotionally Wise by Sam W. Sam enjoys repurposing items and finding beauty in objects that others may discard. The window frame allows for light to shine through the piece entitled Emotionally Wise. Emotionally Wise is meant to reflect on the relationship between the heart and the mind and how they are meant to function together. This piece was created using spray paint and a handmade stencil. Sam enjoys using spray paint as it is a medium that gives her more control for details and precise lines. I'm Tina. Periwinkle ribbon communicates self-acceptance. My plan for this work changed from setting out to cut the wood into smaller pieces to its presentation of a whole and bigger manifestation. A leaning tree takes form on the canvas and speaks to taking up space. After I placed the periwinkle color into the sky, my perspective shifted away from it, leaving me with a sense of it being complete in its own form. I continued to create around it. In reflection of the finished piece, I connected the periwinkle color and shape with a ribbon. And guided by the spirit of symbolism, I discovered that the periwinkle ribbon is representative of hope in the recovery process of anorexia nervosa, the eating disorder type that I'm healing through. Accessing my inner world through art and its meanings has played an instrumental role in my healing journey and self-expression as an artist. This next piece is titled Diamonds in the Sun by Annette Dutton. Annette is a professional artist, founder, and owner of the mobile art gallery Art Gypsies Collective. She is the former founder and owner of the Art Shack, as well as Gallery 609. 
Annette signs her artwork Gypsy, as she is one through European lineage, and she offers 30 years in the art world. Her background includes juror as part of the Visual Arts Jury London Arts Council. She was a guest artist on WQLN, a televised PBS interview as well. Annette, as a featured artist, was published in the book titled Home and Away. As a Canadian artist, her collection of art pieces, including paintings and interior decor, was juried into the province's signature show held in Toronto. Annette's artworks were also juried into Toronto's National Art Exhibition. Annette's bio was published in Who's Who of American Women as well. Annette paints with emotion and color to connect and sometimes to stir the imagination of the viewer. Perhaps at times to laugh at humor in the form of art or to dance to the way of the heart. Diamonds in the Sun is an abstract painting depicting the warmth and love of floral representation, welcoming the viewer into the soul of nature's generosity to spread abundance. The painting is open to giving comfort and joy to the viewer. The artist complemented the golden hues with a background of dark greens and lime highlights. Wow. Well, are we back? We're back. And um, yes, what an amazing collection of paintings. They're just absolutely phenomenal. I myself am an avid art collector. I love art. I worship artists. And uh, well, you can see I've got a painting behind me of Mar Marilyn Monroe, which was done by Graydon Dyke. Um, former Graydon Dyke, brilliant artist, Canadian, and uh, that was amazing, an amazing collection. And you can bid on those fabulous uh, pieces. And, but there's also two more uh, uh, bouts of uh, bidding. Uh, and, and there's 18 paintings altogether, and you've seen the first six. So uh, I also encourage you to, uh, to use a second device while you're bidding, uh, for example, like your telephone or uh, the, a tablet. And you know, um, before we move on to the next auction, which will, is gonna, uh, coming up, it's time for a first musical performance by cellist Erica Nielsen. Now, Erica has achieved um, a multifaceted career as a chamber musician. She's a collaborative artist, an orchestral prayer, player, and an educator. And she's uh, also written a best-selling uh, uh, memoir and a wellness guide called Sound Mind. And she can play anything. She, she can do Baroque, classic, contemporary, and popular. So let's see what she's uh, got for us this evening. Take it away, Erica. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Nielsen and I am a multi-genre cellist, writer, and visual artist based in Toronto, although I grew up in Kingston. I'm also the author of the multiple award-winning and best-selling memoir and wellness guide, Sound Mind, My Bipolar Journey from Chaos to Composure. If you're checking out the art auction, I also have some paintings that will be available after the auction closes. It's an honor to play for you today in support of a fantastic cause. I'm going to play two pieces that bring me so much joy from J.S. Bach's Suite No. 1 in G Major for Solo Cello. This first piece is the Alamon from that suite. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Suite Number no. 1 in G Major by J.S. Bach. The next piece I'm going to play is the prelude from that same suite. Let's see if you recognize this one. from Suite Number no. 1 in G Major by J.S. Bach. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of the concert. Stay cool. And thank you so much to Hopewell for having me. And thank you for supporting Hopewell. You can find me at celloerica.com, Erica with a K, and at celloerica at Instagram and Twitter. Take care. That was fantastic. That was just fantastic. We're back. Uh, back. Uh, Erica Nielsen, I love your hair. Never mind your cello. Um, did I mention I play the accordion? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but uh, that was amazing, and you're very accomplished, that's for sure. Uh, speaking of accomplished, uh, I was asked by the, uh, by the board uh, of Hopewell uh, to um, perhaps show some of my uh, many uh, awards, and um, I... I'd like to because I don't think people see them very often close up. Uh, one of them is um, uh, the Gemini that uh, is for uh, film and television. And this is our, um, it's a little dusty, <laughs> who isn't? But uh, this is the Earl Grey Award for Air Farce that was, uh, well, Earl Grey, I guess, named after a tea bag. And uh, it's a brilliant uh, design where that they take the uh, the profiles of um, the the uh, the profile and then they put all the profiles together like sort of like this if you can see it I did not pose for this my nose is far too big to go into this little thing but uh, that's the uh, Gemini Award uh, we were nominated quite often but we didn't always win we'd call them G the Geminis and uh, another award that I'm very proud of is 
the Actra Award. Now that was for our radio days. And when we did comedy and radio for 24 years, really nobody could really beat us in comedy writing and performing on radio, so on CBC Radio. So we were given these Nellies, they called them the Nellies, and they were just little statuesque, statuettes, uh, bronze, uh, absolutely adorable. Um, look at those bodacious tatas, the, 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 um, the little bum bum here, and, and um, they've changed the, uh, the Actra Awards now, but these were ex absolutely ex exquisite. And we, uh, Air Force has received 16 of these. It's like winning uh, an Oscar, but, um, so I dress, I dress them up. Sometimes I put a little babushka on her, a little, a little, um, a little uh, necklace, that kind of thing, and uh, uh, I just I love these. So um, speaking of Air Force, you know, we, we went in our lifetime through 10 prime ministers, 10 prime ministers. Well, 11 if you count Kim Campbell. Uh, <laughs> do you remember Kimmy? I, I was Canada's first female prime minister that we know of. Um, I was there. I gave that party the, the best three, three months of my life. And then I went on to uh, California, where I became Kim Campbell, LAPD, Los Angeles party doll. <laughs> and that was Kimmy. I loved her. Um, uh, we met, actually, we met Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, who was Justin's daddy. Do you remember uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, Canada's first uh, digital Prime Minister, Fuddle Duddle? And uh, the universe is unfolding as it should. And uh, so we met uh, uh, the... Prime Minister Trudeau a, a lot, and we we adore him. He was a real great character. Uh, there was um, so many of, uh, of the the politicians came as guests on our show. We had. Uh, uh, one of my favorite was Jean Chrétien, Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, remember? The little guy from Shawinigan. Well, you know for sure on that, you know. Uh, people say that you know, I have my own special language, but you know French or English, it don't make no difference to me. I don't speak neither. It's very good. <laughs> and uh, we loved, uh, we loved uh, Jean Chrétien who came on our show. And um, also, uh, do you remember uh, Prime Minister Joe Clark? Yes. Joseph P. Clark back in the saddle again, leading the Progressive Conservative Party back to its former glory days. I was in for nine months. I was Canada's most popular prime minister. I wasn't in long enough to screw up like the rest of them. <laughs> so we loved Joe. He, he was on our show a few times. And uh, of course, then there was a, a reform party leader, Preston Manning. Remember him? Hi, I'm Preston Manning, leader of the reform party. So we had a lot of fun with Preston, who came on our show quite a few times, um, as, uh, as did uh, Adrienne Clarkson. She was the former governor general. And uh, I, I read in today's paper that uh, there's a little uh, uh, upheaval uh, on, the, um, uh, on the Rideau Hall scene, uh, where our, uh, now uh, Ju Julie Payette is uh, apparently she's bullying and yelling at, at, uh, at the staff. But then this, she is an astronaut, after all, and is, is used to being in high places and, and yelling you know, from high up. But uh, um, we loved Adrienne Clarkson. and um, she would come on our show as well, and um, and I would do her like you know, you know, when I was, when I was Queen of Canada, I was there for you. Hello, I'm Adrienne Clarkson, and you're not. And um, when I was in the Rideau Hall, I was there for you. When I had to go and travel to Paris to drink champagne and eat caviar, I was there for you, Canada. Uh, and uh, when I went to Iceland, I brought Canadian ice to show them. I kept it nice and cold on my lap. Congratulations on doing this art of hope. And um, that was Adrian. We loved Adrian. I have so many other characters that I love. Um, Dee Dee Duck is here, like when I, I learned to do Dee Dee Duck in grade seven um, for children. I was on the Mr. Dress Up and uh, the Elephant Show. Dee Dee, can you say hello, Dee Dee? Can you say hello? Excuse me? I'm very shy. I'm very, very, very shy. She's very shy. What do you say? Congratulations. Congratulations. Very good. Yeah. I'm very smart. I'm very, very shy. And I'm smart. Yes, you're smart. So she's a three-year-old. I think, are we going to, um, uh, 
I want to say that uh, we're going to our next block of auction items. And in case you're just tuning in now, remember that all the proceeds from this auction are getting uh, going to the fund at new art therapy program at Hopewell. And of course, all donations that you give will receive a tax credit. Uh, so are we ready to go to our next auction? Is that uh, where we're at, at, at approximately this point? So let's uh, please place your bids to go to um, 32 auctions.com slash Hopewell. I've got it written down somewhere, but it's uh, Oh, here is Alex. Alex, do you want to say hi to the people? This is my, Alex, come here, come here, you gorgeous creature. Is he not adorable? Oh, my God, he's just, so here is what you have to, um, when you bid, here is what you write, what it says. Yeah, 32auctions.com slash Hopewell. That's it. So. I guess let's see the next six items that are, are, um, have been donated by a very talented, mostly Ottawa artists. Hi, my name is Salome Solomon. I'm 29 years old and I live in Ottawa, Ontario. Being born with a rare genetic disorder called albinism, I experienced a lot of struggles and setbacks in my life. So for me, creating artwork has always been my escape and my way of communicating with the world around me. The inspiration behind A Light in the Storm was to remind those struggling with an eating disorder to continue holding on to hope and to remember that there's light at the end of the tunnel. The journey to recovery isn't a straight one and it can be very scary. But if we remember that every step taken towards recovery, even when dealing with setbacks, fears, anxiety and depression, makes the light at the end of that tunnel bigger and brighter. I am truly honored that my artwork was chosen to be a part of such an amazing event and charity. And if you wish to see more of my artwork, you can visit my Instagram page at Catriel underscore art. Thank you again for this opportunity. And I wanna end my video with, I wanna end my video by saying, even the brightest star needs darkness to emit light. Thank you. So this piece is titled Body Forms Blue by Alexandra Marcuse. Alexandra Marcuse is a born and raised Torontonian. She has always loved art, which led to her BFA in drawing and painting from OCAD U. She completed earlier this year. The work Body Forms Blue is a part of a series that explores femininity, the representation of women in print media, physical ideals, the artist's relationship with her own body and her struggles with body image. The series includes works in a variety of media. This work specifically is a collage of images cut from fashion magazines embedded in glossy resin on wood panel. These abstract meditations decontextualize the body forms from their original sources. If you're interested to see more of these works, please visit her website at alexandramarcuse.com or check out her Instagram at Alexandra underscore Marcuse. Ideally, if anyone wants to contact her, please email at alexandra.marcuse at gmail.com. And Marcuse is spelled M-A-R-C-U-Z-Z-I. Hello, my name is Kat Vaskovic, and I'm thrilled to present my photography piece, Waterfalls, at Hopewell's Live Auction. I'm an amateur artist, and my favorite mediums to use are watercolor, embroidery, and of course, photography. This piece, which is printed on metal, brings to mind the phrase panthere, which is an ancient Greek philosophy meaning everything flows, and no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it is not the same river, and he is not the same man. I hope you like it, and I want to thank you so much for supporting such an important cause. Have a great day. This next piece is titled Has a Nice Ring to It by Carolina Baker. Carolina is a conceptual artist living in Whitby. Artists were invited to observe the Motor City Boxing Club and create a piece to celebrate the city of Oshawa hosting the boxing venue for the 2015 Pan Am Games. Her proposal was chosen and what emerged was a wall installation of boxers ring names. A longtime coach at Motor City Boxing Club, Don Nelson said, the best ring names often have a hidden meaning and it's not always flattering, but not everyone knows what it means and over time the name can take on a different meaning. 
a mix of local, provincial, national, Olympic, professional, female, male, and historical boxers make up the 16 panels of the piece. Boxers are strategically placed, creating matchups that are heavily debated within boxing circles of who could be considered the all-time best boxer. There are many astounding stories of boxers and their drive to box. Every fighter has their own story. Carolina's intention was to jolt viewers into the world of boxing and motivate people to watch a boxing match. Fighting is multi-layered, as are boxers. The wall installation is made of 16 wooden panels with a high gloss resin, each an equal size of 18 inches by 18 inches, creating a perfect square like a boxing ring. When fully installed, it is seven feet by seven feet. Uh, hi, I'm Mike Gogan, and I, I'm an artist who's been painting since 1981. Uh, most of the artworks I do are in uh, oils and acrylic paints, but I've done a few watercolors as well. Uh, my style ranges uh, primarily from uh, more realistic uh, types of artwork to uh, surrealism, where I like to uh, present the viewer uh, with a, a break from the ordinary. I'm, I currently sell my artwork uh, through, and I'm a member of, the Richmond Village Art Club, Art Lending of Ottawa, the Ottawa West Artists Association, and the Canada Civic Gallery. Thank you. This next piece is titled Ginkgo Glimmer by Judy Miller. Judy Miller is a textile artist specializing in free motion embroidery. Using a variety of threads, color, and weights, she creates pieces with finely stitched details on a painted fabric base. Judy uses her sewing machine as her choice of artist's tool. No different from a paintbrush or pencil. Though the free motion machinery embroidery is her primary tool, Judy believes that the choice of artist's tool is secondary to striving to evoke a feeling of memory or place. Judy's inspiration springs from many sources, but most often the detailed natural elements of landscapes of the Ottawa area. The shape, form, and movement of the continually changing landscape provides inspiration. Working from photographs to start the creative process with threads to provide color, texture, and pattern on a fabric base. Her embroidery technique lends itself to capturing light, color, and movement that help create a strong sense of memory and place. Thank you, Luba. It's a pleasure to be asked to be part of this, The Art of Hope. My name is Dave Khalil, and I'm a friend of Jeff Bonds, and that's how I'm here. And he really likes harmonica, so if you feel like singing along, you just go right ahead. Here we go. Saturday, regular crowd shuffles in. There's an old man sitting next to me, making love to his tonic and gin. He said, Son, can you play me a memory? I'm not really sure how it goes. Smoke. But 
there's some place that he'd rather be. Said Jane, I believe this is killing me. As a smile ran away from his face. But I'm sure that I could be a movie star. If I could get out of this place. Oh, la la da da da. La la da 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 da. Now, Paul estate novelist never had time for a wife and he's talking with Davy who's still in the Navy and probably will be for life It's a pretty good crowd for a Saturday And the manager gives me a smile Cause he knows that it's art they've been coming to bid on So forget about life for a while Good singing. Okay, uh, you don't have much time to get your art bids in. I'll be right back. Can I stop that thing? So uh, get your bids in and raise some good money for a great cause. Hopewell does some great work. And uh, again, I'm, I'm happy to be part of this. Uh, if you need a golf lesson, you can check my website. It's ottawagolfcoach.com golf teacher and or davekhalil.com uh okay we're gonna sing a song that's pretty relevant these days <clears throat> we all need somebody to lean on i want you singing if you feel like it you can hum a little it goes like this Swallow up 
All the best to hope well and all you people here. Cheers. Fantastic. Uh, that was Dave Khalil. He is known as the Piano Man in Ottawa and has been entertaining uh, us for 44 years. Uh, and uh, apparently he plays uh, uh, and um, uh, performs in the Byward Market. <laughs> But then who doesn't? Uh, I know um, I grew up in Ottawa, but not very well. I only made it to five feet. But I used to go down to the Byward all the time. Great uh, place to visit. And that's where Dave performs. And also, Dave has also been the head teaching pro at the Ottawa Hunt and Golf Club for the past 18 years. And everyone loves him who meets him. Uh, love your music. That was fantastic. Uh, so um, I just want to uh, share uh, some of the art that I've been collecting. Uh, over my lifetime, um, uh, uh, and these are all for that I have gotten at auctions to raise money uh, for. Uh, Ukra these are Ukrainian paintings uh, uh, by Ukraine. Well, they're paintings by Ukrainians. Uh, this was for a. a, a um, a Ukrainian uh, kindergarten. Uh, uh, this, uh, I thought it was a very unusual mother and child. And this is by Halya Novakivska, Helen Novakivska. She's Ukrainian, um, and she's got a wonderful style. She she has studied in Paris, and I love the sort of a uh, you know the, the the kind of it's not like really um, the way most uh, um, icons are. It's wonderful, and um, so uh, Sha. Uh, um, Alex Sean. Alex is going to show me another piece here. I love the, this artist. His name is Roman Zuzuk. He's Ukrainian. He studied in, in uh, Budapest, and he's very popular in Quebec. Has a great sense of humor, and he loves chickens, as you can see. I've got a, several of his paintings that I love. Here he is having a, a, little, um, a little drink with a beautiful chicken who's got her arms around his uh, shoulder saying he's mine, girls. And uh, there it is, like this wonderful background. Uh, and he's very pleased. Uh, Roman also always paints himself. These are self-portraits. He's kind of um, uh, an altitude-challenged man uh, who's um, also um, um, hair follically challenged. <laughs> so that this is one of my uh, paintings I really enjoy. And also, um, another one by Zuzuk is, um, I've got them all over the house, but this is an adorable little piece here. Um, this is a, 
uh, Roman Zuzuk, and uh, he's standing on a chicken. He's holding two chicken feathers in his hand. So uh, that's some of the art I have um, by uh, uh, artists who have donated their beautiful art in order to help the community, as um, the artists in Ottawa uh, have done for this event. So uh, now I believe it's time. This is really exciting. We are going to have a chance to participate in a, in a, in a project, an art uh, project. So we have an art instructor, uh, Julia Fleming, from Ottawa Art Therapy. And she is going to lead us on a short art activity that we can participate in at this moment. Uh, all you need is two sticks and some string. And uh, I'm going to, um, I'm going to get uh, involved in this, too. I'm, I'm going to participate. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, so stick around because uh, get those sticks and strings ready. Hello, Julie here from Auto Art Therapy. Um, thank you, Hopeful, for organizing such a wonderful and important event. Um, I will be taking the next few minutes to guide you through a art directive um, and hopefully give you a small glimpse into the world of art therapy. Um, I'll be using two sticks. So about the same size, like this, uh, and some thread or some string, whatever you have at hand at home. And you'll need uh, some scissors depending on how long your thread or string is. Um, so you will be tying the sticks together with the thread, just like this. Okay, so tie them together so they're secure. This exercise was first introduced to me um, during an art therapy conference and I really enjoyed the idea because it's all about weaving your own story. It's about telling the narrative. Just like the paintings tonight are going to have their own narrative, their own story, and you can consider that as well in, in this process. So once you have everything secure, you're going to begin the weaving part. I'm gonna try to get closer so you see what I'm doing. So you're going to go over under and onto the next stick over under onto the next stick over under onto the next one continue to do that I'm trying to do it backwards here so everyone sees what i'm doing there we go and as you continue this, you continue to weave your story, to com contemplate the texture of the thread, the materials at hand, and the process of creating. Continue to weave. We reflect on the importance of community as your piece begins to come together, just like your community today is coming together. So you see this is the pattern it's creating here. Here's my camera. And then we continue. I'm going to try to go a little bit faster here. Once you get into the rhythm of things, you can really, you can really feel those creative muscles working and the piece coming together. And continuing this motion to bring the creative dialogue to life. And you can see it's a beginning to be a pattern like this. There we go. You can see it in the light. It's going to start to look like this. There was I here. I don't remember which way I was going, but it doesn't matter. Just go with it. So once you're kind of happy with the shape, you can also decide to... Uh, switch your thread if you have two different colors, or you can continue with your original thread. I have this yellow here, so I'm going to try to switch it and maybe consider a new perspective to my story, to my narrative. Just tie this off. Oop. I think the longest part of this directive is just making sure that your knots are secure. Cut the extra off. So we are like this, and then I'm going to add this yellow thread just to give it a little bit of a new light, a new breath, um, 
within the creation. So I'm just trying to tie the knot here so we're ready to go. Okay, and then once the knot is secure, I'm going to go again over, under, onto the next. Over, under, onto the next one. Over, under, onto the next one. So continue. And then I will continue and with the yellow thread until I am happy or content with what I've created. And if it looks tangled, that's completely okay. Sometimes their stories are tangled. Sometimes they don't make sense when we're creating them. They make sense afterwards. You'll hear um, in art therapy, often people will refer that it's not about the product in the end. It's about the process throughout about engaging yourself in the creation, in the art. Maybe learning something new about yourself, about your, your inner self. Okay, so I'm going to end it here. This is going to be my weaved story for tonight. And as you complete your piece, you can notice, has your body is your body feeling a little bit more grounded? You tie off your creation as a closing for this short directive. And you come back with just a little bit more creativity in your life and maybe a few new creative breaths. So here it is. Here is our My Wave story for tonight. And thank you so much for joining in. It's been wonderful to share this with you and I hope that everyone continues to have a beautiful evening. Hey, okay. Uh, yeah. So, here we are. Uh, yeah, so uh, wait, wait. Um, look, I got, I had two chopsticks and, uh, and some string and I made this so isn't that fantastic and I feel so much better now um, thank you so I guess we are um, going to end this auction at 845 we started late so it will conclude at 845 and you can um, bid with uh, on this uh, this uh, site here 32 auctions dot com slash hopewell so uh, I myself am going to contribute uh, a, a, a painting for as, as a door prize and I would like to show that and it is by the famous um, uh, artist uh, Ottawa artist Philip Craig uh, I've got a series of four and this is um, one of them and uh, I've got another here um, do I have another one? Yes. Um, just take the note off, maybe. Um, anyway, I met Philip Craig, and uh, he signed. It's a print, but I have four of them. And whoever wins a door prize, you have to uh, actually donate $40 or more. And uh, there's four of them, and you can choose whichever one you want. There's this one, or there's uh, this one. And this is a paintings that he did uh, in a villa in Tuscany, uh, Italy, where he and his family would go. A wonderful, wonderful artist. He's brilliant. And um, so I've got four of these. And uh, whoever wins shall choose whatever one they like. And so I think we are now um, going to catch up uh, with uh, a performer, right? Uh, a performer. Aren't we? We're, are we going to perform her? This is live, you know. So I, I need my little jazz hat because she's a jazz singer. And I'm a jazzy kind of gal. So we caught up with our next uh, performer, jazz, gospel, and blues vocalist, Denise Pelly. And while she is in rehearsal in London, Ontario, so take it away, Denise.
I am Clara Kim. The primary function of this painting, Art Couple, which is a part of the series featured in the City of Ottawa Art Collection, is this union between frog and chicken. Their meeting is quite uncommon in the real world. Frog and rooster were my best friend to play with in my childhood. Even though I love them both equally, they just cannot get along with one another. In my opinion about happiness, it is all about relationships. 
I love to put this concept on my canvas to show two very opposite creatures to pose the question, how can they get along? Perhaps we could learn something from these creatures. It is all up to you what that exactly is. Thank you. A neighbor of the Perry Bolliger family translated Francois Chetien's comic book when she was in Belgium and had this montage of original artwork framed in memory of the experience. Francois's work includes several comic books, the design, a cover for the publication of Jules Verne's rediscovered book, Paris in the 20th Century, and several movie credits, including The Golden Compass, where he worked in production as a sonographer. He designed the metro stations of Porte d'Halle in Brussels and Arts et Métiers in Paris, and also a mural in Brussels. Our piece, Express, is a portfolio of eight images by Claude Renard and Francois Chetien, edited by Magic Strip in 1981. This comic takes place in a train. The set was reissued by Magic Strip in 1983 as a set of cards. They produced almost a thousand copies and each was numbered. The piece in this auction that you're bidding on is number 230 of 999 issued, and each page is signed by both artists. Hello, my name is Carole gagné Ince, and I'm a sculptor and a painter in Ottawa, and I've also been working in the social service field for almost 40 years in Ottawa. And this led me to this special project called Life Tiles, which is a celebration of people, of vulnerabilities and resilience that exist in all of us. And this project is based on the principles of um, acceptance and inclusiveness, forgiveness, humility, respect, patience, delight, courage, gratitude, generosity, and kindness. It's about building community. It's about telling stories of people through individual tiles or through series of tiles. Each tile is individually sculpted and mold casted in hydrocal plaster. Um, so I invite you to come to my website and to see if there's any of these tiles that speak to you and that tell your story. Thank you. This next piece is titled Conquiri by Brandon Nicholson. Brandon Nicholson is a university student who's passionate about arts and sciences, as well as being part of a community who loves and supports each other. This initiative was shared with Brandon by a close friend whose loved one had been affected by an eating disorder and took their life. As someone affected by his own mental illness, Brandon is deeply touched by the loss his friend and their family are experiencing, and he would like to do anything that he can to support them and others who are affected. Hi, my name is Laura Dirk, and I'd like to share with you some background of my painting called Thursday Afternoon. I'm very fortunate to live in a high-rise condo that overlooks a fantastic northwest view of our city and country landscape. The horizon is a wonderful metaphor for brighter things to come. Often mental wellness hinges on our belief that a new day and new horizon is coming. The place where the sky meets the earth is a magical place for color and change. Thursday afternoon offers a glimpse of the beauty of the horizon and continues to inspire me in so many ways. Hi everyone, my name is Erica Nielsen and I'm a professional cellist, writer, and visual artist based in Toronto. You can find me at celloerica.com, that's Erica with a K, or at celloerica on Instagram and Twitter. This is my piece, Emergence Number 5. The painting process in my current body of work explores the boundaries between painting, texture, and sculpture, and the tension between structure and fluidity. This piece was created during the COVID-19 pandemic, and it evokes evolution, emergence, and renewal. It's also wonderful to touch as much as it is to look at. I hope you enjoy. Well, and um, we're back. 
And uh, before I sign off this evening, um, this is your last chance to uh, bid. Uh, all live auctions will close at 8.45. And uh, we have an art shop that will stay open until Monday, July 27th. There was so much art donated that uh, there is now an art shop. So that uh, feel free to invite your friends and colleagues to check out the art shop at uh, 3232auctions.com slash Hopewell. So um, that was like a great, um, great um, amount of fantastic art and art different, um, different, uh, it's not just painting, it's like 3D, dimensional things, photography, uh, so that's just like fantastic. Uh, now, I want you to mark your calendars, because Hope World's next big event, pay attention now, it's their signature, it's their annual event called Breaking Bread, Breaking Stigma which will take place on October 22nd, 2020. Now, this is a live stream fundraising event that will feature well-known local chefs who are going to give free creative license to make unique gourmet sandwiches for you to enjoy. So uh, that's fantastic. Um, you know, um, this is an organization that really works hard to, to serve people with eating disorders, and uh, they're always looking for good people to get involved. So please consider volunteering or donating, and uh, you can go to the, hopes, uh, to the website for more information, information hopewell.ca. So um, we all want to thank you for participating in this uh, first Art of Hope event. Um, it's going to be a fantastic program that will help people with eating disorders uh, through healing and uh, being able to share their stories. This is a very serious illness, and it, um, it does take lives, which is extremely unfortunate. So uh, we want to thank, uh, special thanks to the task force team. We want to thank Naris, Tia, Andrew, Jeff, Nick, and Nick. You know who you are. There's two of you. but. You know who you are. Uh, all of these people planned this incredible event. And I want to thank all the volunteers, the artists who contributed works to the show, and uh, to the musical performances as well. It was a great evening. Uh, I'd like to uh, really, uh, we'd like to thank uh, Sian's uh, family for um, their incredible kindness and strength to, uh, to um, allow us to um, 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 do this in her behalf. And you know, Cian's memory will always be with us as long as we keep her in our heart. As long as we're alive, as long as we remember her, she will be alive to us. And she left a wonderful legacy. She was a very kind-hearted, uh, beautiful, uh, young, intelligent girl who just wanted to help people. Um, unfortunately, she was not able to help herself. And that's why this program is being set up so that there will be a place that people suffering uh, with uh, eating disorders can um, have a safe place to, uh, to heal. So um, thank you all for the participation, your generosity. And you know, we're, um, I don't know how, many, how, much, how, how much time I've got. Uh, 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 oh, uh, two minutes? Good grief. Uh, brings me like to the last. There's going to be a a musical uh, play out with the two time award, uh, Juno Award winners um, uh, blues band called Monkey Junk. And I just happen to have a Juno Award of my own. Uh, not for music, but this is for uh, best comedy album of the year. And this, was, this is the original uh, uh, Junos. They, they were massive. Now they've got little ones that you can just hold in your hand. But uh, this is fantastic. Uh, and it's, yes, honoring distinguished Canadian music figures and a comedy album as well with Air Farce. And um, I've had such a great career. I'm so blessed to have had this opportunity to uh, be with you tonight. And I uh, want to thank you so much. Uh, uh, I do have a, a Sir Montague. I don't know if we can bring him out. But um, um, I've got uh, my beautiful four-legged uh, boy, that uh, my Maine Coon cat. I don't know if. <laughs> If Alex is going to be able to bring him out, he's sleeping. Uh, but um, 
thank you so much for your generosity and your presence here tonight. Uh, here he comes. Here comes uh, Sir Montague. Come here, baby boy. Here is my hello, darling. Thank you, Alex. Look at that. Is he not splendid? And uh, take care of yourselves. Be kind. Be calm. Be safe. Uh, have a wonderful life. Uh, this quarantine time, I didn't talk much about the COVID, but it has changed us. And uh, so, Monty, can you uh, stretch and, and do a nice big stretch? Yes, yeah, stretch. He does yoga, you see. And, um, and look at that magnificent tail, 13 inches. Ah, Maine Coon, all the way. My little constant companion. And uh, yes, he, um, he understands me very well. Uh, he can read my mind. And what is he saying now? Take off your glasses, Luba, and uh, say bye-bye. I'm sure that uh, we've got monkey junk playing us off. It's a great, um, great song. Monkey is just melting. He's melting away in my arms. <laughs> oh, I had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> oh, my God, I just love it. I just love it. God bless you all and take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Hi everybody, it's Matt Saab from Monkey Junk. We are very honored to be part of the Art of Hope event tonight. And we're honored to be among all the talented artists that have contributed to this very worthy cause. Tonight we are dedicating our performance to the memory of Sian Bolliger. May she and her love of art live on forever through Hopewell's art therapy program that tonight's event will help to fund. Thank you for all your support and enjoy the music.
And it cuts me 